All right, we're almost done with our modeling in our scene. We've thrown on some textures and things. They don't look so great yet because we're just still looking at it in material preview mode. We haven't added any lighting or anything or, or made these look prettier. But before we do that, the last thing we need to do to our set of arches is come in here and do some major pruning. So if our view, here, let me just switch over here to the solid view. If I'm looking through the camera right now and I'm gonna hit the home button to just fill the screen with my rendered view, basically looking through the camera. Obviously, if our staircase is gonna be kind of our area of interest over here, here, we need to do some pruning of these columns that are in the way. So this one that's right in front of us, I'm going to do save that till last, and we'll, we'll show you how to break that up in an interesting way. But if I look at it, I'm just going to scooch out of the camera view. So clearly this one here, and next to the staircases, and probably that one behind it, and then probably that one there. It kinda, it's kind of up to you. I'll show you how to do this, and then you can prune as many as you think you need to do. It's, it's easy to do, it just took a little time consuming. Um, so I'm going to find this arch. Let's start with this one right here. I'll just scooch it a little more into the center of the screen. And we're we're just going to prune this guy right out of our scene. And this one in the front here we'll do differently later on. So I'm going to select the arches here, make sure I've got the arches selected. Sure enough, I'm going to hit the tab key to get into the edit mode. And then I'm going to click on a face over here and I'm just going to tap the L key. And the L key is select linked. So it basically selects everything that is adjacent to that face on the object. So now if I hit the delete key or I can hit the X key as well, and I can just pick the first one, it's usually going to be right underneath your cursor set to vertices. Just click on vertices. That just means even though we selected a face, it's also selected all of the vertices that make up that object. And if you select all the vertices and delete them, well, then there's nothing for the object. You can have an object that has vertices and no faces. You can have little dots floating in space or even lines and dots. But if you if there's no vertices, there's no object. So that's, the, that's kind of like the overall delete. That's the exact same process with these columns. The only, only problem with this is that we have to do it for each one of these. So I'm going to go through, you got to do it four times. So it's a little time consuming. I'm hoping to put his love of repetition to good use someday. <laughs> so I'm just selecting any face. I'm hitting L and then I'm hitting delete or X, selecting vertices. So we'll do that again, L, delete, vertices, there we go. And last one, L, delete, and vertices. Now you can do this by selecting with box select and things, but you just gotta be really careful about not grabbing, especially when something like this with an array like this, it's really easy. You think you got it perfectly, but you got like one little corner of the column in the background and then your your geometry is broken and you didn't even notice it for a while. So it's way past any undos or whatever. Okay, so now I've got this guy right here. I'm just gonna, I got that one click. I'm gonna hit delete vertices. And in mine, I have this little plane that's floating in here. You may have that too, if you do delete it. Th this time through, I ended up with this little extra face in there um, that uh, doesn't belong there. Now what I've got is this hole basically in the the mesh here. And it's so dark and shady up here, you probably wouldn't even see this, but it's easy to fix. I'm gonna hit the two key on my number pad to get into the edge mode. And I'm just gonna select one side and then just another side. I'm just gonna hold the shift key down, select an edge on the other side. Make sure that you're selecting, you know, contiguous edges. And of course you could hold down the alt key and do a whole loop select that would do the same thing. Um, and that would make sure that we've gotten all the edges. You only need two, one that are facing each other, but a loop select would also work as well. And then hit the F key to fill. So the F key is just sort of filling the empty space between edges where a, a, a face could be. If there's a, a potential face that could happen between those edges, then it will automatically fill it. So basically it's capped off that column there. So it just looks like that column was never there. So I always recommend doing that same thing over here. You might even in this case here, because of like where the stairs are, this might even be a spot where I might come in and prune out these arches too, because they're kind of getting in the way. Maybe take it all the way back to this one. I think that's what I did. I think I left this column in one of my renderings, but I deleted this half of the arch and all of this arch. And once you do this, I mean, you can also go in and, and just select faces as well. You don't have to do the link. If it's easier just to hold a shift key and select a bunch of faces, you can do that as well. So that's just a matter of repeating that process until the columns that you want are gone. The one that's a little different here is this guy in the foreground. We're gonna take this one and we are going to pull it out of this whole array and we're going to use a, a Boolean operation to make it look like this column is broken. So I'm gonna pause the video right here so you don't need to see me do it again. I'm gonna do the exact same process that I just did over here, but instead of deleting them, I'm just gonna keep on adding to my selection. I'll be right back. I don't know why, but I thought this thing would be a lot faster. 
Okay, so I just did the exact same steps that you saw me do a minute ago. I just grabbed the various faces of the object and just kept, kept, kept on holding down the shift key as I added to the selection. So I'm still in the overall arches over here, but I wanna pull this one arch out of this. And so with all of the stuff selected, make sure you orbit around and, and you didn't miss one of your four columns or whatever, that you've got all the faces all the way around. Once you know that that is the case, then hit the P key, P for separate. So the P key will give you the separate and then it's just right there, separate by select. Selection. You can choose loose parts. That means if you accidentally added an object somewhere else, that's an easy way to fix it. But in this case, we want to separate by our selection. So P and selection. And notice that it's changed the color of this uh, arch, this one arch to this kind of chocolate brown here. So that means this is now outside of the arch. And the reason why we did that is you might want to be able to just like have a copy of this arch and maybe turn, make a couple of duplicates of this and have a few that are kind of like lying over on their sides or whatever. That's that's great. Do whatever you want along that, um, that regard. But the real reason why you want to do this is this next step is Boolean operation. Unless you've got a really beefy computer with a really strong graphics card, you could crash your, your blender by doing this next step without pulling this piece out of this whole array. Because right now there's 25 of these. And if we try to do the Boolean from the whole array, it's probably just going to get tired and your computer is going to time out and Blender will crash. So, but we need to remember we're still in, even though it's highlit right now, we're still in the arches. We're still in the arches one. So we need to hit the tab key to get out of the arches there. And I'm going to select, just click on a blank spot or click on something else. Select that I make sure I've got arches two or arches zero, zero, one over here is selected. And then this is a great place for us to hit the question mark key on your keyboard. The question mark key or backslash key basically gives you uh, just an isolation mode. So the thing that you have selected is is the only thing shows. It fills the screen with your object and it hides everything else. They're not gone, they're just out of the way. I'm still in object mode and I'm going to say Shift A and I'm going to add in this case an icosphere. You could add anything you want, but I think an icosphere is pretty easy for this. And it's gonna pull it forward and I'm gonna pull it up to where it's kind of intersecting the column there. I'm gonna make it like slightly sort of this way over here. I'm gonna hit the tab key for the icosphere to get into the icosphere. S and Z, you don't have to do this, but this is a fast way just to kind of make it tall so that it's taking out more of the column. And what you want to do, we're going to use a Boolean operation. So anywhere where there is a, the icosphere will be a void, except we will have some problems. Like we don't want that right there. This will have a little bit of geometry floating in space. So I'm just going to come in here. I'll hit the one key, come in here to the, um, uh, the, the vertice mode there, and I'm just gonna push that down until there's no like little floating pieces. And again, the nice thing about this is it's actually kind of non-destructive, so we can go back afterwards and fix this. So I'm gonna hit the tab key to get out of that, select our, our extra arch over here. I'm gonna come over here to the spanner, to the uh, wrench there, and I'm gonna say add modifier, a Boolean. I'm gonna add a Boolean modifier, and we could use the eyedropper, but there's only one icosphere here, so we can grab the icosphere from the list. And now it's already made that cut. So now I'm gonna go ahead and find the icosphere, and I'm gonna hide that there, and we're gonna see that, yep, that looks pretty good. Now, they've added this new sort of fast and exact in here. Try If the whole thing disappears down below, try clicking on the self-intersecting. That seemed to solve that for me a couple of times. And I also noticed that clicking over here into the fast, uh, the older, this is the way it used to be, um, the older way of calculating this, it just kind of caps the top side. So for some reason, in exact, my base has geometry filling this, but there's a hole in the top. Now, if you could just go in and do a loop select and fill that, that would work as well. But just clicking on this fast button also uh, solved that problem for me. But the neat thing about this is the icosphere is still there, right? The, the thing that is actually making this break is still there. So you could, for example, go into a wireframe mode and maybe I don't like the fact that the top of the sphere here, I'll hit tab to get in there. I think I just wanna bring this guy down here so it isn't quite so like, inverse conical, you know, it looks a little weird, like it's like this sort of funnel shape, like we're looking inside of a funnel. Oh, but I gotta make sure I don't create little little floating bits. Like that's not the end of the world. If you, if you do that by accident, you don't notice it. Um, you can always come back and fix that later on by just deleting the, the geometry. Oh, I'm on the wrong side here. Let them know what it means to choose the wrong side. Um, that's one of the weird things about the X-ray view is it's kind of hard to see what side you are uh, selecting. So again, I'm just kind of, Taking a look at that, and then you know when I sort of like where it's looking, I'll go back to the shaded view, hide the icosphere again, so I kind of get a preview. Like that looks pretty good. I think let me just jump through my camera 
there again. Even though everything else in the scene is hidden, I can kind of look at it where it is in the camera. And feel free to leave that icosphere there until the very end. You don't really even need to mess with it. So now if I hit the question mark key again, I can bring back the entire or backslash. Um, and I can bring back the whole scene, look through the camera and got a sense of like, oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. So maybe I might want to do a little bit of tidying up there. Something looks a little funky up there or maybe it's not even worth it because this is just going to be kind of buried up here in the dark. If you were exporting this as a game asset or something, you'd want to make sure that all this geometry was a little tidier than it is. I might, uh, I'm not going to make you watch me do it, but I might come in here and like just, you know, file down these little bits a little bit there so they're not quite as much in the way of the stairs. Uh, but that's a great way for you to kind of break up your scene. So you might on your own go through and repeat that process, go back into the arches, select, I would recommend this one, and then maybe even the arches above there uh, and get rid of some of those other pieces. Oh, and let me show you another trick too for selecting some of these. Two. I'm going to hit the tab key to get out of that edit mode, grab the arches, hit the tab key again to edit to that mode. And in this case, I'm going to go to the top view over here. And let me just go into the top view in wireframe. That makes it fairly easy. So where's one that I might want to get rid of everything from? So if I come in here and I zoom in pretty close to this column, I'm just going to draw a box select. I'm holding down the left mouse button and I'm just dragging a little box select right around that shape in there. And it looks like I got some of the surrounding geometry over there, but that's okay. Let's see what happens if, if I hit, just hit delete vertices and then I'll turn back on. So yeah, in fact, I think I'm gonna to wanna to get rid of these all together anyway. So you can, I'm just gonna come in here and grab these. Oh, and this is a great place to remember that trick too, where if I click one side there and I go over here to this edge over here, I'm gonna hold on the control key before I click and it's gonna select everything in between. And now when I hit delete and vertices, I can take that, that whole thing out. So do the same thing over here, hold on the control key and click over here, hit delete, vertices, boom. Now, oh, I got this hole in my, my face here again. That's not good. Shut that hole in your face. No problem. Just come in here to, well, maybe I'll grab these two faces. I'll grab these two faces, hit the F key, fills that in. It's looking great. So again, you get the process here now where you've got, we made all this, this geometry uh, really quickly with that duplicate array. And now it's time to kind of go back in and tell it we don't want some of that geometry. So go back looking through the camera and yeah, you can see how removing that arch there has opened up this area here a lot more. So if we put a figure coming down the stairs or a doorway with some light coming down it or whatever, we've got a mu much more room in here. Maybe you even want to get rid of this column. It's kind of up to you. You sort of just do as much pruning as you want until the scene looks more like a little, little less crowded. Uh, so feel free to break more columns and take some of these pieces and lie them around on the floor like rubble. Um, have a good time. And we'll come back in and do some lighting and some of the last little touches next. <laughs> <laughs>